Now, one other thing I want to mention and is very helpful and nice about the Sky Vector system is that you're going to notice that there's a lot of airspace and things on here, but you're going to notice there's some colored rings on here as well. And these are actually what we would consider a active, this is an active map because we're actually getting what Sky Vector calls drone TAMs. And that's a takeoff of the word no TAM, which is notice to airmen. This is something that's required currently of all exemption holders. Uh, the NOTAM process is going away with part 107, but it still would be good to know what that uh, term is and how to file one. And we're actually going to still be covering that uh, in our course. Now you're going to see, even in our area here, uh, if we move the map around, you're going to see some of these purple drone TAM areas. And if I mouse over that area, it tells me that there's UAS operating in the area and it gives me the effective dates from the surface to 400 AGL and this one is valid for 40 days so somebody's doing some work in that area there. You're also going to notice things like TFRs. This is a temporary flight restriction. In this case this happens to be a Chicago Cubs versus Milwaukee Brewers baseball game and that is at uh, Miller Park. Uh, if we go up north of here you're going to see a really large one here around Oshkosh. Well, that's because we're about to go live with AirVenture 2016 in uh, four days. So, and that's going to happen from the, it gives the dates there. And this is active from the surface of the airport to 12,000 feet. So unless you are on a flight plan or operating at the airport, this would be an area that you can't just go blasting off your drone if you live, you know, five miles away from it, you're going to have to know how large that ring is, what the valid times are, and that's why Sky Vector is a great uh, option to actually, you know, dial into it and see, you know, where am I going to take off, and is there a current and active TFR? TFRs pop up for all kinds of reasons. Primarily, um, we see presidential TFRs. So right now we have presidential debates going on. We have the president traveling around. We have other governmental officials traveling around. There'll be a security TFR. We have a lot of air shows in the summertime. These pop up all over the place. There's another baseball game um, out here. Well, that just ended. Um, there are various types of TFRs. So just keep a lookout. They're typically always red, depending on you know what online source you're using. Again, the drone TAM is this purple circle, and you'll know that it's an active piece of the map because if I mouse over something else, let's say I mouse over this airport here, nothing happens. When I mouse over this, that's an actual uh, UAS operating area or a drone TAM. Now, the other thing that's nice about the online is that you'll notice up here in the upper right, there's some layers, and you can actually turn on things like weather, and temporary flight restrictions and other things. Uh, if I turn on uh, what's known as a METAR or a TAP, this is weather information. So now not only am I looking at that same chart, but anywhere that I see a green dot, I know that that is essentially VFR weather. And if I put my mouse over there, it tells me the station name. In this case, it's Burlington or KBUU. And it tells me the weather. We're going to go through how to read a METAR uh, in a weather chart because that is also part of the exam. Uh, but this is another way that you could not only practice that, but you could actually look up live weather while you're uh, operating your UAS commercially. So for right now, we're going to turn off the weather to kind of turn things down a little bit. We'll also turn off the drone TAMs and the TFRs and we'll clean up that map. So let's get back into looking at some of these common symbols that we're going to see. Now again, we covered the airports. Again, Magenta is non-towered. And the blue airports, like this one right here, are towered airports. So what other information can we get off the sectional chart? Well, we have these little icons here that look like little arrows, or some people call them teepees. Um, if you see the small one like this, the, the, the small point with the dot, that is an object that is 1,000 feet AGL and that's above ground level or less when you move around the sectional chart and you find one that looks more like the Eiffel Tower let's find one here uh, these are all fairly short here's one right here this guy 
It's got more of a swoop to it. Those are a thousand foot AGL or higher. So that could be anywhere from a thousand foot on up. Now they do give us the measurement of that tower. So in this case, this particular tower is 1,120 feet AGL. And again, that's above ground level. So if you were standing right at the base of this tower and you had a tape measure, it would have to go up to 1,120 feet to reach the top. Now, what's this top number mean? Well, that is MSL or mean sea level, also known as the you know barometric pressure altitude. So if I'm flying an airplane across here um, and I have my altimeter set correctly to the current barometric pressure, I would hit that antenna at 2,049 feet uh, MSL or above sea level, okay? So for us, we're not going to be operating UAS aircraft with barometers in them as far as readable gauges. So for us, the, the AGL figures are what we're probably most interested in. But know that that is AGL on the bottom and MSL on the top. Also keep in mind that if you forget that, you can come over here to that legend again and take a peek at it and refresh your memory. They do give you both the right here. Uh, top mean scene level, height above ground, or AGL. Also, if you see a UC, that means that it's under construction. So a lot of times out here in the Midwest, we get wind turbines and towers and things. And for instance, here's one right here. That may be under construction. So you notice that this one just has a altitude of uh, 1,179 feet MSL. And they don't quite have the AGL number yet because they're not quite sure what it's going to be until it's completed. This may be the height of a crane or something in that area. Um, so the short TP is 1,000 foot or less. The large Eiffel Tower style is 1,000 foot AGL or higher. So those are some pretty common symbols. They do put major highways and roads in here. So if you're trying to search for an airport and you know that you're off of a particular you know, highway, you can kind of find the highway and then maybe at the town and move over and find your your landmark if you're using a chart for uh, situational awareness. Now, the other thing that they have uh, on charts, uh, again, there's lots of information on here. Um, we have major landmarks. So like this is Lake Kashkakan. We have Stoughton. We have, you know, some major things here. Um, you'll notice that there is a magenta flag here. That is what's known as a VFR reporting point. So VFR being visual flight rules. And again, we're talking more on the pilot side of thing, flying an actual aircraft. But these questions may come up on your test. So if I say, if I see that there's a flag over something on a sectional chart, and I'm talking to a tower, and, I'm, and I say that I'm at Lake Koshkakong, they absolutely know where I'm at because this is a marked FAA VFR reporting point. Just like this one right here is, uh, which is the town of Stoughton. Now you'll notice there's a lot of yellow on the chart here. And what that represents is basically cities. If you were flying over these areas at night, that is the general shape and size of the city if it was lit up at night. So you would see these particular shapes. Not relevant to us. Most of us are not going to be flying at night, but just know what that is in case a question comes up. Let's look at some other things on here. Let's look at these large numbers here. This is, you see two, big two, little two, uh, large seven, little seven. So this is 2,200 feet. What that basically means, those are called maximum elevation figures. And if we were to take this quadrant right here on the chart, you notice there's a lat and long line here. So vertical line, horizontal line, down and over. If I was to fly through this box, that, that box there, at 2,200 feet or higher, I would not hit anything in this quadrant. So there's nothing in this square that is higher than 2,200 feet. Now, if I move over to this quadrant, you'll see there's another square right here the, between the lat long lines. That is 1,700 feet. So if I'm flying an airplane or a drone for that matter through this square, 
this one particular quadrant at 1,700 feet or higher, I will not hit anything. No antennas, no mountains, no buildings, no nothing. Now, where they come up with that number is they take the object, whatever that may be, they take the highest elevation of that object, they add in a plus or minus like 100 feet for error, and then they add in a slight number for avoid avoidance. It's usually a couple hundred feet. So between the error and the obstacle avoidance, you could have between three and 500 feet of clearance between the object and that quadrant. So again, some of that may be relevant to you, it may not be, but you need to know what those large numbers are. Again, they're called MEFs or maximum elevation figures and we'll put that information on the screen. Now we're gonna get into lat and long uh, shortly because that's a specific thing um, just for reading sectional charts, understanding what 43 degrees and 90 degrees and all these things mean and that's how we're gonna come up with lat and long. But I want to dedicate a, a special segment just to Latin long when we get to that. So let's continue looking here at our sectional charts. Now, again, we have on larger airports, you notice we have multiple rings here. And you'll notice that on this inner ring around the class C, or C as in cranberry, if you remember that, uh, we have two rings here. And actually, this ring is actually split in two. This inner ring has these two figures here. It says SFC, which stands for surface, and then it has 4,700 feet. So if I'm flying along here and I get into this inner ring, this airspace is controlled from the surface to 4,700 feet. If I'm at 4,800 feet, I could fly right over this airport and I wouldn't have to talk to them. Now you'll notice that the outer ring it doesn't have surface. It has a couple different figures here. It has 2,200 all the way up to 4,700 feet. So if you think of this as an upside down wedding cake with the center being touching the ground, coming up and then going out and then up again, if we were flying along our aircraft here or if we were operating right in this area, we could operate without talking to the tower up to 2,200 feet and then we would have to talk to the tower or we could operate above 4,700 feet. We're obviously not going to do that with most commercial drones. Now, if you were over here, you notice there's a slightly lower number because this probably lines up with approaches coming into this main runway here. Again, if you're flying out in this area, you could be flying from the water up to 1,900 feet and not have to talk to them. If I'm above 1,900 all the way up to 4,700, I would have to be in communications with Milwaukee Airport. So that's what these numbers here are. Let's move down to a smaller airport like a Class D for Delta or a dashed line, Class D. You'll notice that this airport only has really one ring, which is this dashed line. Typically that's about four miles from the airport center. And in this little square box here, it says 3200. So that is essentially the top of the airport's airspace. So if you're operating anywhere in this circle from the ground up to 3,200 feet, you need to be talking to the airport. Um, and that's very important that when you are out there uh, operating commercially, that you understand airspace because if you're right here, you're outside of the airspace. If you're right here, you're now inside the airspace. And you can't always rely on an aftermarket app that you got off of the Apple Store. Those aren't, are not always correct. While some of them have good information, you really need to base your location off of an FAA you know, uh, designated sectional chart, whether that be electronic version or uh, an actual printed chart. So again, inside, surface to 3,200. Outside, you're in a different class of airspace and you're not required to talk to that airport. Let's take a look around here. Um, again, in some areas, particularly like Chicago, there's a lot of, there's even other airports in there. It can be hard to find information, but if you find the airport and then you look over to the right or left of the airport, they usually try and put all that information very near the airport. It can be confusing if there are multiple airports like this here and you're not familiar with the airport name. But again, they try and match up the airport name and put it close to the airport. Um, you may have to zoom in or you know, actually look up the airport and see maybe the runway heading if you want more information 
or you're not sure which airport you're actually looking at here. 